Well, hello everyone, Philosopher Stoner here, making another video, making it at a different time of day though, usually I do these in the evening, it's the morning where I am, not too early, it's almost 9 o'clock, but uh, yeah, a um, few things I'm going to get into, but uh, before that, uh, uh, the person has been leaving comments on my videos, Lynn Harrison, uh, Renee Maryful, um, you gave me your uh, phone number, your WhatsApp number, um, in a comment on one of my videos, and I tried adding that to WhatsApp. Uh, you're not showing up. I don't know if you have WhatsApp Messenger installed. Your number's an Australian number. The only way I can call it is on Skype. Um, but otherwise, yes, it won't let me add you on WhatsApp. You're not showing up. Um, you're in my address book, you're in my contacts on my phone, but it won't show up. Um, I can maybe leave a comment with my number, um, maybe that would work better. I have your number, you'd have my number, but yeah, and, and anyway, yeah, I don't know why it's working, and I've entered it exactly as it was put, as you put it in, in the comments, so... So anyways, yeah, so I'll send you a, a comment, a message, whatever, with my phone number, although I don't really like putting my... Um, phone number on this thing. I'd rather not leave a comment with my phone number. I'd like to try to protect some semblance of privacy that I don't really, you know, relatives of mine or, or people that I know don't really watch this. This is something that I keep private. Even though I am showing my face and, and talking here, it's not something that I, I broadcast uh, to my the people that in my life, the few people that are in my life. Not that I have very many people in my life, but, but anyway, yeah, so... Maybe uh, send me an email or something, or I'll send you an email if you, I don't know, yeah, something like that. We'll, we'll figure it out here, but uh, fuck, everything's always got to be so uh, complicated, and I'm tired. Uh, yeah, trying to get to work on my e-commerce store, setting up a custom domain, and all of these tech companies, I've said it the last few videos, there's something really creepy and weird going on. No, no accountability whatsoever. Um, no phone number to call and no emails to, to, and indeed if there are emails, they, they bounce back. They don't work. Um, no communication. It's very much, yep. Figure it out on your own, which is fine. I am figuring it out, but I'm a bit annoyed. I could have had my first product launched last week. I've got the page ready to go. The product of the wholesaler, it's all ready to fucking go. And I'm just waiting for, wait for uh, tech support to help me out with this custom domain thing. And then it's going to launch. And then probably I'm going to set up another YouTube channel with a different name, which will actually be for marketing and promotion and stuff and uh, do all that. But yeah, these, these, that, yep, yeah, it's, it's true. Um, hell is other people. Although when Sartre said that he meant something completely different, but anyway, I won't get into that. Um, but yeah, the people really suck. And that's why anything that I do in my life has to be a kind of Ronin, uh, lone wolf kind of a thing because yeah people suck i've had partnerships with people uh you know, people are shitty people are suck suck so one of the the, the broads that i've been dating um she's the most ladylike of the ones that i've met on that seeking arrangement site and i've also canceled i don't have a membership on that site anymore i did it for two months and that was enough and this goth woman, and as I talked about maybe before, I don't even remember if I talked about it, but she was struggling with a lot of depression. She told me a lot of really dark, dark stuff that ties in with the, the SRA, Satanic Ritual Abuse stuff. She actually has that stupid spiral symbol that I've gone on about a million times before tattooed on her on her arm as part of a another tattoo of two people hanging by a noose. And yeah, very dark, very depressed woman, very spiritually... Uh, depleted and broken and so we did that together and it was positive and she felt better and all of that but i've been going over to her house on the weekends to just to, to relax whatever um, sometimes she cooks something sometimes she doesn't but anyways we hang out relax and she's living with these people her family her husband um, who's a guy like me who has basically the same thing that i have this high functioning autism thing although he's a little bit different um okay looking guy and you know and he she lives with this guy that's a drug dealer he sells weed and he also sells cocaine and that sort of pissed them off 
him selling cocaine and they said you can do it but just don't do it in the house and hey i can't blame them but yeah that guy um won't reveal his name but yeah he's a dick um i offered with him to do one of these e-commerce sites with him to sell you know edibles and stuff and i could integrate it with pay um paypal and bitcoin and other things and you know it could be a business he said yeah yeah interested he said oh yeah yeah text me give me a call i did um no response week later no response so yeah i'm not chasing him but anyways i went over to her to her house on the weekend it's it's monday now i went over on saturday and the guy was a, a complete dick you know that only because of this woman woman here uh, that I held back doing something very aggressive and stupid. Um, men do this thing. This is what I want to get into this video um, in response to one of uh, Lynn's comments. Um, yeah, men do this uh, social hierarchy stuff, right? So Vox Day has gone on about it, but he's a bit of a more of a right winger uh, Christian type. But um, other uh, anthropologists and uh, sociologists and stuff have talked about a similar thing like did we see in nature the pack of wolves the pack of sheep um, all animals follow this sort of thing where there's an alpha so that's the leader they're the most dominant and aggressive and they're the leader of the pack they take charge then you have the betas that are like the second in commands that are reasonably confident uh, the alpha tends to get most of the mates but the betas they get something they get like a little bit they and they're like the lieutenants they're like the captains so really beta is being used as this pejorative or uh, not not pejorative uh, derogatory term for anything that isn't alpha but beta is not bad but beta is okay they're reasonably confident competent guys but they're not uh, visionaries they don't have necessarily have a mission they help implement somebody else's vision so they do have you know, leadership qualities and stuff but they're not yeah, they're not visionary. They're not uh, on a mission. They're not uh, uh, evolving things. They're just implementing somebody else's. And then you have beneath that, then you have the deltas. And that, that the deltas are your standard average guy that are just competent professional types that, you know, factory workers, plumbers, electricians, uh, that sort of thing. You know, competent guys, okay, not really great leaders, not really anything, but they're 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 solid guys. And then you have beneath that, then you have the uh, the gamma males, which have some status, but not a lot. They typically have, and I think I've been more of a gamma male. I think I even used to be more of an omega male. Not that anybody gives a shit about any of this stuff, um, really. But yeah, the gammas, and then Vox Day talks about how it's typically gamma males are. Uh, low enough on the hierarchy they're not the lowest of the low but they're just their second from the to complete bottom that they have a resentment they want to be the alpha or the beta and so they seek to throw a wrench in the system they seek to try to overthrow the the alphas or the betas or whatever and, and try to take over but they can't they're weak they don't have a lot of social skill stuff they're not yeah they're not uh they're not uh that that great they, they can typically find a niche and they do have some value to society, but not really very much. Vox Day is even accused yet yeah, Jordan Peterson of being like a gay, kind of gamma male. And, and others, there's like that John Bolton guy I talked before. He's a gamma male. Um, there's a lot of them. And then you see that, that that's the pattern. That's what's going on. And then beneath them, the omega males. And that often, very often, omega males are like your school shooter types. Guys that just don't have any status at all, don't even have any friends, nothing. I've been a kind of omega male in my life. I can see times in my life where I was. But anyways, it's relevant to what happened to me on the weekends that I could see with the husband and this guy, the drug dealer, living with them. Of them, like, it's boys will be boys. And it was a gesture, like a playful. Like there's a subtext where it's, it's playful, where they started, uh, the one guy said something, the other guy said something. They're insulting each other and then they're doing like, you know, fisticuff stuff with each other and a kick and stuff. And it's, 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 it's mock, it's playful, but there's a subtext beneath it where, yeah, they really want to do that. They're trying to establish some sort of a pecking order. So anyways, that's what this guy tried to do with me. Um, the drug dealer guy, I bought some of my dope off of him. He sort of ignored me, snubbed me. And then, uh, we're, we're outside having like a fire. 
in a, in a party and uh, he whacked me over the head with a box and then I was sort of stunned and then he came and he started saying stuff to me and I was starting, the anger was starting to build up and I, I have a bit of a hair trigger temper. Like when I get angry, I tend to be very venomous and go over the top. I can get very carried away very quickly and that's why I tend to avoid parties. I'm bad at parties with this autism thing that I have. Yes, I disconnect, I zone out. I make no apologies for it, but I also don't, people don't really want to talk about anything interesting or that's interesting to me. Um, I don't really see, I've been to many parties, I've hosted parties, I, I made attempts to, to be sociable like that, and I just don't see the value in it. But yeah, people uh, were like using me to, to, to have parties at my house, just to have a place to get drunk, shit like that, that yeah, there's no benefit of value. Anyways, so he says all of this stuff, like, really, what's wrong with you? And why are you so distant? And this and that. And I wanted to tell him to fuck off, but I didn't. I didn't do it. And I was like, and then I thought about it. And then I started shaking and getting angry that, yeah, like, he whacked me over the head with a fucking box. And that's like, yeah, that, them's, that's, that's fighting. That's, that's wanting to start a fight. And he's also loopy on cocaine, too, that, yeah, he's fucked. And only because of this woman that I have some kind of a friendship thing going on with this woman that I held back. I got out of there, I got in an Uber and got the fuck out of there and I explained it to her and the husband that, yeah, you know, that's it. that if it were anywhere else, if it say it had been at a bar or a club or something and a guy had done that to me or whatever, yeah, I would have, I would have fucking done something really stupid that they would, the fight would have had to be broken up and they would have maybe had to call the cops or something. Like I can get very, the, the thoughts going through my head at that point were very, very dark. Like, yeah, I would have taken maybe the, the, there was a bottle of rum that was sort of empty and I would have taken that bottle and smashed it over his head and taken the shards and started stabbing him in the neck. Um, that I know I got, I got demons in me that I'm capable of doing something very dark. That's why I don't, I don't go to bars or clubs anymore. I don't interact with people the, I did security at a bar. I was a security guard, a job that I had. And it was, this was New Year's, I think 2018, New Year's Eve. So New Year's Eve, 2017. And, uh, I was admitting a low vibrational energy. I was very unhappy. I have all this education as I've talked about before and, as angry, seething with anger, um, seeing that, yeah, that guy's going to go home with that woman and he's getting paid and he's getting laid and all these people, all, all the, all the social status stuff, all the, all the posturing, all the, all the, the games people playing. And yeah, that guy's going to go home with that woman and I'm not, and I'm working at this stupid bar around all these stupid people at this stupid party that I'm not interested in interacting with and I'm not getting paid and I'm not getting laid and I was angry and resentful and yeah, I was looking for a fight. So a guy was like, I was supposed to block this doorway, people going through this door and this drunk guy wanted to go through. And then, uh, yeah, I sort of tried to stop him or whatever. And then he wound up punching me in the face, almost broke my glasses. And yeah, I, 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 I went, I, I didn't perform very well considering that he was drunk and I wasn't drunk, but I broke his nose. He gave me a black eye, but yeah, I was emitting a low vibrational energy. And I know if I go to bars or stuff uh, that I don't put up with people's crap anymore and that, yeah, I don't need that kind of drama or negativity that I know I, I'm capable of doing something really shitty that I'll go to jail or something. So I don't do it. So yeah, so anyway, so I fucked off with this guy. So women, I think women are, are have more social intelligence than men. And women can be a civilizing influence. They keep all of this sort of glued together. Like environments like prisons that are dominated by more alpha male types. Yes, are hell holes, they're shit holes. Uh, us men don't really work together. We seek to dominate each other. We seek to bully each other. We seek to establish pecking orders. And the women sort of level it, but the women follow a similar thing. Women can be even more cruel and vicious to other women. They do social ostracism, social isolation. To, to women, um, gossip, stuff like that. Um, some women like that can be very vindictive. But yeah, men are, are doing this thing. And it is relevant to a comment that Lynn made, uh, Renee Maryful. I don't know. She switches the two accounts, I think. It's the same person. I'm not sure. Sometimes, I don't know, but whatever. But yeah, she was mentioning, it, you know, like, why do you need a woman? Why isn't a fleshlight good enough? And I was really thinking about it that, yeah, like, why am I wasting my time with these broads? You know, uh, they expect quite a lot of money and quite a lot of stuff and they're not really doing anything for me. 
They're not going to be cooking me dinner. They're not paying my bills. They're not, uh, they don't really, they're not interested in being my friends, you know, and I've done more traditional dating in the past. Like I, I, I used to be way more innocent and I did things organically. I read books about, you know, interacting with women and being more confident and telling jokes and all that kind of stuff. And I had relationships that developed more organically through people that I met and none of them worked out because of my autism. Women get to a certain point where they realize, oh yeah, there's something off about this guy. Not quite right. And then, of course, yeah, if there's no benefit and there's no value, yeah, goodbye, see you later. And so I went on this dating website to just, I wasn't looking for a hooker. I was looking to establish a very clear value equation, clear expectations right from the start, open and honest communication. That, I, yeah, I want to have a sort of a relationship, a friendship with a woman. I'm not selling Romeo and Juliet. I'm not selling uh, Disneyland or Happily Ever After, but clear expectations, no commitment to monogamy because I personally think yeah, monogamy doesn't work for men or for women. Um, it's different for both genders, uh, how it actually works. Like us men, yes, we want variety and newness, but women do, but it's different. It happens over they'll be really attracted to a guy if he's now more of an alpha, more on the alpha spectrum. But then, yeah, even after a couple of years, uh, they stop getting wet. They lose interest. It's like a lion taming project for them. Uh, the lion, if they want that, that, that women after the age of 30 want more of a beta male. They want a guy who's a, who's a family man, who's going to be a good father and also pay most of their bills for them. So women wind up settling for guys that are more betas a guy that has money, a guy that's like a nerd like me, but maybe say I have lots of money. And it's all about this equation of, well, the men are after reproductive values of physical features, right? Facial symmetry, good skin, boobs, uh, uh, you know, certain f uh, fat ratio, big butt, that kind of thing. Reproductive value to take care of a baby, um, feminine nurturing qualities. And then the, the women are after, of course, survival value. And historically, that's always been the alpha male. But due to this problem of civilization, uh, no, it's been more of the betas have taken over that the, there wouldn't be so many betas and lesser type of males in the gene pool if it wasn't a viable strategy that women ultimately are selecting for and choosing for. And uh, yeah, they're the ones that, yeah, they want a family man. They want a good father, that kind of thing. But the thing is, is that the, these guys are not dominant enough that they lose interest in it. It's, like I said, it's like lion taming. It's like uh, they want a dominant guy and then they want that guy to submit a little bit. But if he starts submitting too much, they become bored. It's like, yes, the lion is tamed. He has submitted completely. He has surrendered, um, uh, moving on to a new lion and tame that lion. So they get bored with it. But if the guy is a true alpha and never really completely submits... Uh, they also get frustrated with that, right? It's like, yes, when you're taming a lion or you're taming a pet, you know, you give them treats and you do stuff with them and stuff. And you always want to see a kind of progression. Like they can, they'll be attracted and interested if you're, you know, you're dominant and you say no to them and you stuff like that. But yeah, they want to see like even just inch by inch progress. Otherwise, yeah, they, they lose interest. Or, yeah, no, I don't mean lose interest. I mean, they get frustrated if they don't see that. So it's a delicate balance. And then what the problem is, is that a lot of guys think, oh, well, if I'm just alpha enough, I'm going to keep this woman forever. And no, um, that, but, you know, women leave alpha males all the time. But then uh, they go for a beta. Then they like a beta. They like a guy that's going to kiss their ass, buy them a diamond ring, uh, you know, buy them flowers and chocolates. But if the guy's doing that every day, yeah, that gets boring that gets stupid. They'll do it for a while and then they'll go back to an alpha. Then they'll get frustrated with that. Then they'll go, you know, find another alpha or find another beta or whatever. And on and on it goes that, um, it just doesn't work. We're not built for anything long-term monogamy. It's about making babies. It's about making babies and farting out a baby and then doing it again with another person over and over and over again. And that historically, yeah, we just never lived very long. Uh, the, you know, you think back in prim primitive hunter-gatherer tribes, the Native Americans, yeah, you'd live to your 30 or 40, and that was it. Yeah, they didn't, people didn't live to be 80, 90, like we're doing nowadays, that it was only, monogamy only worked because it was enforced uh, by social engineering through things like the Catholic Church or other religious institutions where they're like, well, you want a divorce? Well, too bad, you can't get a divorce. <clears throat> so for guys that were alphas, 
as long as they were married and took care of a woman and a family, they were allowed to you know, have a mistress, have a girlfriend on the side, and it was all shh, kept quiet, but they were allowed to do it because it's in their biology yep, that we want to have sex with something different, and, and that's the equation here. So yeah, I, I was thinking about it in, in regards to her comments, so that's really how I'm dissecting and looking at these male-female relationships. Yes, it's a value equation, and then also realizing part of this is that, yes, the women have the higher value in the sexual marketplace, and it starts off when they're younger and physically attractive. Uh, women are born rich but die poor. So then when they get to be an old lady, when they're 40s and 50s and start getting saggly and wrinkly, yes, that's when a lot of women start complaining about the whole dating scene, that guys all of a sudden, yeah, aren't that interested in them. You know? Yep, they're not that interested. And they, they're they eerily similar to the comments of a lot of younger males that are horny, that are like, you know, 15, 16-year-old beta males that can't get a girlfriend and don't understand why and don't understand right because they don't have any social status or skills or they got no value or not very much value they haven't made their bones they haven't earned their stripes they haven't toughened up yet and that's what's going on right but then yes the equation is that the men are born poor but die rich relatively speaking but then in our society with this beta male problem we're just making a lot of men that are born poor and die poor and there aren't enough alpha males there aren't enough uh, dominant males there we're, we're uh, us men are, if it, the dating thing is such a mess, a lot of the men are blaming the women and blaming the feminists. No, it's us. We just acquiesce to a lot of crap. Uh, that, you know, certainly guys are doing bad stuff. Uh, there's, there is a kind of a rape culture. There is a kind of, a, yeah, patriarchy. But it's other men abusing other men. You know, it's mostly the men dying in wars. It's mostly the men dying as coal miners. It's mostly the men doing a lot of the stuff that, yes, a lot of men that we we have the disposable jobs. We have the, 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 and that's the price that we pay, right? That we're disposable. But then the women are also paying a price, right? They have to worry about, you know, having hormonal changes, having a period well, once a month or whatever where their private parts bleed, the risk of uh, childbirth. And not just childbirth, but a painful childbirth and also possibly even dying in childbirth, which historically was quite common until the modern, the last, say, 50, 100 years or so. Um, so, yeah, they pay a price, right? So that's why they're treated like a little princess. And, uh, you know, the whole dating thing is just you, you, in the initial stages of courtship, yeah, the man has to pay a lot of money and take them out on a lot of dates and do a lot of stuff kiss their ass but then once they got married to the husband yes they did become like the, the husband's slave barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen which is yeah of course bullshit but that yeah all of that in the modern the last say 40 years has all kind of fallen apart there are men still following the traditional 1840s 1950s dating formula and they're depressed and frustrated that yeah a lot of the men are, the women are just taking them for a ride they'll pretend they're interested they'll take the dinners they'll take the flowers but they're not attracted to the guys, the guys that are, you know, very submissive like that. They're just not hardwired to find them attractive. If you don't show signs of, yes, being more dominant and assertive, um, they're not, they're not that interested. Of course, it's a balance, right? It's about having brass balls, but also having a tender heart. They do want a guy that's going to be a good father. That's not going to be a complete, you know, physical verbal abuser right they are selecting for that but yes they tend to be attracted to dominance and that's the problem there just aren't a lot of dominant guys anymore or guys that are visionaries or guys that are on a mission or guys that are really taking the reins and steering the ship here um even you know like emendum shows he has he is very passionate and he has dominant features he doesn't take people's crap. Um, he's very aggressive, assertive. In a lot of ways, yeah, he's an attractive guy and in a very dysfunctional society, I would say. Um, but yeah, as I said in my, my second last video, yes, it's all crass crap, right? It's my, it's my dick. It's not my head. And that I have cluing into, yeah, I don't really need to do it. I am just spending money on, on I've said it before, the, these broads, right? They're not, there's nothing ladylike about any of them. That as much as maybe I'm objectifying them as a sexual object, they're ob objectifying me. They're not interested in being my friends. They're not just, you know, interested in listening to my problems or my day at work or 
my interests or hobbies. They want, you know, here, give me the money. Okay, you got an hour, finish in five minutes. Hurry up, let's go. Uh, sigh, burden, chore. Yeah, you're my pay pig. Resentful, repulsive. They're repulsed. That Yeah, they're not really all that interested in, you know, uh, making love in a jacuzzi or a pool or uh, um, taking it slow or uh, really enjoying it. They're not that interested. They're not that, 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 yep, they're women. They're not attractive. They don't need me grunting and slobbering all over them. It's, it really isn't that interesting. It really isn't that important. I no longer, there, there isn't a love. Yeah, but if they weren't physically attractive, would I be that into them? Would I really give a shit? No, I wouldn't. And if I didn't have any money and I didn't have any status at all, would they would they even give me a second look? No, they wouldn't. I've said that before, right? If I were a homeless bum on the street, yeah, they'd walk, would step right over top of me and wouldn't even look at me twice. Get look at me sideways. Um, and same, if they were an ugly old lady, uh, well, maybe I'd be their friend, maybe I'd talk to them, but I wouldn't be interested in you know cuddling or banging them or, or doing anything. And it's just biology. And we're caught up that we have too much intelligence and self-awareness. And it's sort of catching up with us now that we're, we're becoming more and more aware. Yeah, there's, yeah, monogamy doesn't work. And society hasn't really accepted it yet. There's, there's some people that have accepted it. It's more out in the open than it ever used to be. That people are cluing in that, yeah, the divorce rate is, uh, you know, depending on what statistics you look at is, you know, 60, 70%. But it's also interesting that, yes, yes, it's mostly the women initiating the divorces. And my dad and my, my mother got uh, divorced when I was a kid. Um, uh, my All the relationships that my mother had with other guys, yes, they had all been divorced. Um, all sorts of family, friends, all these people that are no longer in my life, yes, they were all divorced. All The, the nuclear family is kind of dead. I have aunts and uncles and cousins and, and people that... I know or exist or alive, but they may as well be dead. They don't want to talk to me. They don't message me. They don't I want to have anything to do with me. That I was never really being sold on this whole family thing. I don't know what it looks like. Um, and with this autism, yes, there's just a lot of things that I don't grasp. And it's funny, Lynn made a comment that, yes, I'm very ignorant of the whole connection and relationship thing. I think in a lot of ways what causes me problems is I am just too aware about how crass it is. And that, yeah, I don't really need it. It's true. What do I need a woman for? They're not going to be doing anything for me. They're not paying my bills. They're not uh, They're not uh, going to cook me dinner. Not that I even really want that. But yeah, they're not really fucking doing anything for me. Um, I'm not that interesting. Uh, yeah, that's... They're not that interesting either. They got, there's, yeah. People go on, oh, a soulmate and this and that. And eh, I don't know. I just don't get other people. You know, like I see commercials. There was a commercial I watched uh, with, they're talking over uh, Skype over a phone. And the, there's the woman with the little baby and they're smiling and the husband's waving and all of this. Uh, all I ever remember with my family is fucking drama and nonsense. People yelling and screaming and throwing plates against the window and you know, shit like that. It wasn't all crap. I do remember, like, I do have some positive memories, but they were fewer than the negative memories that, yeah, I just don't know what a family is. I just don't get it. I just don't understand. So yeah, I guess, yeah, the fleshlight is good enough and to uh, do my thing. But I've also, uh, my last comment is yes, porn and stuff. I've clued in that. Yes, it's bad. It's bad that I, I never is a very feminine word. I'm not saying I will never look at porn again or I will never jerk off, but I want to get it to the point at least to start of yeah, detoxing myself from it at most once a week and then eventually once a month and then eventually less than that. But that'll be hard. That'll be something that, uh, like I said, start off once a week, then once a month and then take it from there. Uh, the two systems are called NoFap and semen retention. Semen retention is you can... You can try sort of jerk off, but then you don't ejaculate. And I think I need to start letting go of it. That it is, yeah, you know, kind of get over it. That there's only two ways it ends. Yes, they leave, the woman leaves, or uh, in some way they get bored, frustrated, whatever, divorced, whatever, or they die. And that's the only two ways it ends. The only two way it ends. It doesn't end any other way. And that what I need in my life is to focus on projects and hobbies and uh, there are things that I'm interested in that I can do while I still have some kind of health, but I am falling apart. 
my dick doesn't really work too good these days anymore. I constantly have to pee. Uh, I think I have hemorrhoids. I've had two surgeries on my, I had a surgery on my urethra, my penis, and a surgery on my bladder for skin blockages. I have to squeeze when I pee. I'm like an old man already with my dick and it doesn't work as good that I guess I have to start letting go of it. Um, so like I said, never is a strong word, but yes, detoxing, letting go. And also the same thing with marijuana. I've been using it too much. I've been depressed and stuff. And it, I can, when I use marijuana and I jerk off at the same time, it feels really good. If I go into my little fantasy land and imagine and use the fleshlight and have that, you know, that nice lubricated warm suction around my penis. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> and I know like. I've said a lot of really controversial stuff already, so I don't care saying stuff like that. I'm really revealing myself here. It maybe is a little bit too much information, but uh, yeah, um, that yeah, it is a fantasy. It is a wank. None of it's none of it's real. There isn't, uh, you know, it's not anything that important. It is all kind of just silly nonsense, and you know. At the end of the day, yeah, the women aren't really that interested in anyway. Like I said, they don't need me grunting and slobbering all over them for like four hours. I can do that, you know, jerking off to myself. I can take my time. I can be as fast or as slow as I want. But I also now acknowledge that, yeah, that they put a lid on it a little bit, detox myself from it, make it a once a week, maybe once a month kind of a thing. And I can be reasonably happy that uh, the I've, I've had really good orgasms doing that. And yeah, but you know, I really don't need a woman. It's true. And a lot of women these days, yes, are becoming more dominant in a lot of ways. Yeah. What do they need? There's, there's some men that don't make very much money that they make more money than a man actually that. Yeah. Why the fuck would they want to cook and clean and take care of some stupid guy that can only make $40,000 a year? It makes sense to me that the problem is yes, a lot of women don't need a guy there is no benefit, there is no value, and therefore, yep, disposable. Uh, it is all just a value equation. You're either of benefit or value or you're not, and then that's it. And we think something else is going on when, no, that's all that's really going on. A struggle to survive in a harsh environment, and that's what's going on, and and reproduction and all of that. And especially since I'm not interested in having a family that, yeah, these relationshipy things, I, I've been told too many times to, you know, fuck off and get lost. Um, just too many times. Ghosted, dumped, uh, stop talking to me. And yeah, maybe I am an asshole, but it's like, yeah, uh, I, I don't need to p play that game anymore. And that seeking arrangement site was just an experiment. And yeah, it, you just, I've just clued in. Yeah, it's true. I don't need it. It is. It is just a bunch of crap. It's crap. And uh, like I said, life is this slow process of letting go of things.